I do feel that SAFE had a kind of um, dealt with, I mean, of course, it, there were predecessors to SAFE, like, like you know, Red Desert by Antonioni, that yeah. dealt with really interesting things about, about industrial life, modern life, and the alienation of a female central character, mm-hmm. or Jean Dielman, Chantal Ackerman's film, or um, uh, Don DeLillo's book, White Noise, that came out in the 80s, mm-hmm. and, and things that, that, you know, and, and many other examples that deal with a sense of a kind of post, you know, industrial culture or late capitalist culture that, and, and a culture where there's new meaning to the ideas or questions around immunity, you know, mm-hmm. and, and all of these, and what, what is immunity? Really, you know, and, and like in, in a weird way, we, it's something that we we covet, but it's also something that's that's in some ways about an unconsciousness. It's about yes. being away, away, and not untouched. susceptible, untouched right? by something. Exactly, and 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 where you and where where you see the danger in this film is when she is untouched, when she manages to, like I said, that last moment of the film where she is so excruciatingly alone and so, so sick. Yeah. And she finally succumbs to this this idea that I'm just gonna go inside herself to figure this out. And you're like, wait a minute. And that's, like I said, that was for me the, the moment of the big, the deepest emotion, you know, what I would, and, and, sh- and shockingly so. Right. It's almost you know, like an inverted you... birth. It's sort of like going back uh-huh, into uh-huh. a womb. Yeah, yeah, so like, why would that be okay? Why exactly. would you, why yeah. would that be a choice? Exactly. But I think in some ways, all of these themes have only expanded as yeah. digital culture has expanded, as technology has expanded, as questions about health and illness and, and um, you know, you know, susceptibility to mm-hmm. to viruses. Um, even with the progress made around HIV as one case, you know, yeah. there seems to be many, many others that are continually cropping up that endanger our sense of our our human, you know, corporal, suscept- you know, persistence yeah. in a modern world. So I do think the film, people will say the film has definitely um, lived on and remains relevant, you know, in some ways, which makes me feel great. And critically, it even received its kudos, like, by the end of the 90s. Oh, yeah, the, one of the best films of the, the 90s. Best film so of the 90s or something. Like, what? Yeah, so, so the critics definitely came I do think for, for me, I mean, you know, to be really shallow about it, it was it was an interesting point in my career because it was uh, the beginning of my film career intercepted with the beginning of independent film and and yeah. safe. You couldn't have gotten more independent than safe. You know, it said made for a million dollars, made right. under these auspices. Christine with, Vachon, producer, yeah, yeah, Lawrence Lasnik. Yeah, without the expectation that we were going to make a lot of money, the idea that this is a different kind of filmmaking without the the economic expectations. Right. Um, because you so, shot The Fugitives. You had a very I different... Already? I guess I did. Yeah. I think you did. Maybe, I'm, yeah. maybe it's uh, well, close you know, yeah. in that time. Yeah. And also, because oddly, you know, when I was starting out in the 80s, I was doing a lot of television and I was yeah. doing some theater, but I wasn't doing... I didn't do any film work and I didn't wasn't considered to have like... I mean, the, the theater work I did, but it was still not like... It was it was not like serious or whatever, but, but independent film changed... A, a lot of things for everybody. It just there's suddenly a new avenue you could actually have an artistic voice. Right. I actually think it's much different now and much harder because the, the economic expectations for any kind of film are just are completely uh, it's completely untenable. It's made it really impossible for people I to know. do anything new. But at that point, we were given that tremendous freedom, and yeah. it really changed the way I thought about what I wanted to do with my career. And yeah. then I ended up having a very two prong career where mm. I where I had movies that I did for myself, and then I had movies that I did to make you know to make a living and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and in, in, a, in a sense, it helped me and it shaped what I do, which is like okay. Well, a little of this, a little of that, and that's fine, you know. Yeah. But that was 93. It was the very, very beginning of it all. Yeah. And, and then there are a lot of people who feel disappointed to have missed that moment. Yeah. And I think that we were lucky to have lucky. had it. Absolutely. Totally. And that when we did Far From Heaven, and that was really a script yeah. that I wrote with you utterly in mind from yeah. the beginning. And it, in, 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 in some ways was returning. I, I thought about Cirque when I wrote Safe. Safe. but. Um, but this was an absolute embrace of the Circean melodrama uh, and putting it back into the mid 50s. Um, but what's funny when I think about Safe and its ending, the amazing thing about Cirque is he always had those false happy endings. Uh huh. You uh-huh. know, where his films would do this certain amount of labor to 
uh, expose the problems of social settings and, and the pressures on individuals. And then they would sort of kind of cr be crushed by those pressures and kind of succumb to them. And then finally, little quick resolutions would occur at the end of movies like All That Heaven Allows, mm -hmm. which, which Far From Heaven was inspired by. And it was a happy ending that you never trusted. It never felt like it could ever be sufficient yeah, to, to make up for the tragedy to make up that had occurred. The thing that, <laughs> yeah. that he so beautifully had exposed in the yeah. course of the film. And what's funny about Far From Heaven, which is a film I am very proud of, and that again you make what it is. Oh, you made it. Well, <laughs> but, you know, it was a really another really rare special collaboration and creatively for me, but it doesn't have that kind of ending. It actually has a kind of honestly, it has an ending like a love story, yeah. like a bittersweet, sad ending where you kind of pang for what might have been right. with these characters. Certainly she's had to compromise and she's had to give up so much, Kathy Whitaker in that movie. But Safe really does have that. the false happy ending. Yeah, it does. That yeah. I never really got as close to, that I really tip the hat to Douglas Sirk, That's who did so so well, and, and I feel like it, it was a difficult one for audiences, but yeah. it's, and Cirque's movies are, remain difficult for audiences today, mm -hmm. but I think we, we really went for it. We really tried yeah. something tough, you know? Yeah. And stuck to our guns.